know, un unfortunately, long-term nucleoside analog therapy is not able to achieve a functional cure. There's some estimates that it could take up to 40 years for this to happen. Um, in most of the uh, registration studies and in most of the long-term follow-up studies, people on a nucleoside analog, there's a chance of a functional cure of maybe 1%, definitely less than 5%. So unfortunately, no. So there, that's a good question. There's a lot of uh, interesting studies being done looking at new viral as well as host or immune markers. Uh, what we uh, have, have uh, been sh shown recently that quantitative hepatitis B surface antigen, uh, which is not um, a perfect biomarker because it doesn't reflect all of the, because uh, it it's also a reflection of integrated hepatitis B virus and as well as CCC DNA. But that may be a useful marker for seeing treatment response to the nucleoside analog. But at a certain point, the quantitative hepatitis B surface antigen levels can plateau uh, in, uh, in patients on long-term therapy, and that could be uh, related to the presence of integrated virus. Uh, serum HBV RNA is another sort of interesting biomarker that's been looked at, and there's some studies showing that that combined with a viral DNA or hepatitis B virus DNA, especially if you use very sensitive uh, assays, uh, could help predict uh, response and, and risk of flares with, uh, with stopping uh, antiviral therapy. And then there's another marker called Hep B core related antigen, which is interesting because it looks at different parts of the, of the virus in terms of the E antigen and the, the capsid or the um, uh, other uh, and the core protein, and, and that may be useful as a surrogate marker. There's a, there's a whole host of, of biomarkers in terms of immune biomarkers uh, and, and host, uh, assessing the host response, and it probably would not, <laughs> it would probably take a lot of time for me to, to go into any great detail about that, but that's also an interesting area to look at. So the drugs that are targeting CCC DNA, unfortunately, are still very early in development. Most of them are, are preclinical, meaning that they're being tested in cell culture or tested in animal models, but not yet in, in humans, in patients. <laughs> so uh, I won't be able to answer that question, but that is our hope. I mean, that's the goal, is to directly target CCC DNA, like with gene, with gene editing therapies. So none of the drugs that are directly targeting um, CCC DNA itself, uh, but there are some um, better understanding of how the different drugs in clinical trials are working and some of these drugs is hypothesized that it could be affecting the uh, CCC DNA activity it could be uh, affecting regulation of CCC DNA and and whether um, and, and its ability or its transcriptional activity and um, uh, controlling different viral proteins uh, such as the core protein for example uh, that you know traffics to the nucleus and and um, and um, affects CCC DNA activity. So not directly, but indirectly, some of the drugs may have a benefit. And, I, and what was your second question? Uh, the second question is, is it monotherapy or combined therapy with other antiviral drugs? Yeah, so I mean, I think it will definitely be combined therapy. Um, and I, I should have mentioned as well that there's also uh, studies looking at interferon. So interferon does know to have an antiviral effect which uh, has been shown to impact CCC DNA uh, as well as sort of a broad sort of immunomodulatory effect. So, so that may be one of the reasons why patients who receive interferon therapy um, are more likely to achieve surface antigen loss or, or a functional cure. So maybe having that as part of the different combination regimens um, would be uh, beneficial. So the, there's a lot of really exciting new drugs. Some of them are going to phase three studies, like starting next year in 2023. So once a drug gets to phase three, then that's the final step before you get regulatory approval. Uh, but it can still take some time before it actually gets to the market because you have to apply for all of the different uh, regulatory agencies for, uh, for approval and going through all of the, uh, the review for, for that process. And, um, and whether it would be three versus six months of, of therapy, I don't think so, because most of the treatments that they are looking at, it's usually uh, you know, expecting it would be a year, maybe two years of 
treatment, but that's certainly better than what we have with the youth, which can, which can take up to 40 years. And there may be some selected populations of people or of patients with hepatitis B if they have low level hepatitis B surface antigen or um, if they have what we call better immune control of the infection, that some of these directly acting antiviral agents or some of these combination regimens, you could get away with just a short duration, like three months or six months. But the vast majority of patients, I think, will need to have a longer duration of treatment, at least with these new drugs that are, being, uh, that are coming out.